Hello, 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 and welcome back to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Yes, it's another fine stoner bromance, and I can't even believe that that's actually a subgenre, for Seth Rogen teaming with previous collaborators Jonathan Levine and Evan Goldberg, among others, for the Christmas comedy The Night Before. The last time Rogan got together with writer-director Jonathan Levine and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, they produced the pathos-drenched comedy 50-50, which I loved, and I also credit it with kickstarting my crush on Anna Kendrick, which continues to this day. While The Night Before does not quite reach the heights of that film, or other Seth Rogen comedy classics like Pineapple Express or This Is The End, it does deliver a whole Christmas sleigh full of laughs and another insightful look at male relationships buried in the subtext. Not every joke or subplot lands exactly, but if the litmus test of a comedy is whether or not the reviewer laughed, I did. Big belly laughs, I almost fell out of my chair. This movie is fun, it has modest ambitions, and provides enough surprises to make for a great evening out with your buds. Copious drug use and Red Bull branded limousine is optional. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. From literally the first moments of the film, you can tell that this movie is going to have a little more heart than you'd expect, but it will be delivered with just the right irreverent touch. Here's a little story I'd like to tell about three best friends and their first Noel. It begins right before Christmas, 2001, when a young man named Ethan became an orphan. That's Tracy Morgan as the narrator. He's just the first of many great cameo appearances in the film, the rest of which I wouldn't dream of ruining. The story is summed up very succinctly by Ethan, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, here. Gentlemen, 14 years ago to this very night, I lost my parents. And you guys have been with me every single Christmas since then. But tonight, we have decided to end this tradition. Chris is just too famous to hang out with us anymore. And Isaac's about to have a baby. We're going to the best Christmas party in New York City. So that gives us several hours to hit as many traditions as possible. To the end of an era. Now the three friends each have their own set of problems. Ethan, his development still stunted by the death of his parents, has been floating through life, never taking any risks, and that includes not taking the next step with his former girlfriend, played by Lizzie Kaplan. I wonder if they will reconcile by the end of the film. Uh huh. Isaac, played by Seth Rogen, is about to become a father, and he's keeping it together on the outside, but inside he is freaking out. Then, over the course of the evening, he does a deadly combination of several illegal drugs until everything he's feeling on the inside gets brought to the surface. <laughs> Now, seriously, I could watch Seth Rogen's drug overdose shenanigans all night long. He is a master of improvisation and physical comedy, and he really commits. I think the cocaine and the mushrooms are reacting poorly. Are you gonna be cool at this party? Cool as fuck, Jeep. You look insane, only your right eye is working. Do I look weird now? Yes, you look weird. Still weird. Weirder. And finally, there's Chris played by Anthony Mackie, and he is a pro athlete experiencing newfound fame and desperately trying to impress and to get in good with his superstar teammates without revealing that his recent surge in performance on the field is due to his newfound use of steroids. Okay, so we're going with that then. Now Chris, in contrast to his two buddies, is the least relatable of the bunch, and his storyline is the biggest head scratcher. He does provide some great laughs, don't get me wrong, but compared to the more universal themes that the other men are going through, it doesn't exactly play right. One thing that did play right, so right, is the relationship between Isaac and his pregnant wife Betsy, played by Jillian Bell. <gasps> Who's that guy? What guy? The Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
Jesus Christ. Wait. Is that what they think we did to him? Yeah. Can you tell him Jewish? Yes. Oh. Your Twitter. <laughs> All too often, this role is written as a nagging shrew whose purpose is to strengthen the bond between the protagonist and his bros, bro. But Betsy is an understanding, patient partner who loves her husband and even supplies him with the drugs that will fuel the rest of the movie. Whoa! <laughs> and she even tells him to go have a great time with his friends. i such a rock throughout this whole pregnancy. You're like my Dwayne Johnson. Thank you. It's not just focus on yourself. Holy shit. Dreams? Is this cocaine? You haven't done cocaine for 11 years, I don't think. Yeah, no one has, I don't no, think. Holy fuck. Yeah. And in the end, she seems like a very patient partner to go through life with and raise a child with. I, I'd marry that woman. Kudos to this movie for writing a refreshing take on the wife character. And kudos to Jillian Bell for playing it perfectly. Speaking of ideal partners, Lizzie Kaplan is given nothing to work with comedically here. Instead of being merely an object of Ethan's affections and his reward for growing as a person. But lo and behold, with merely her own massively likable persona, she makes her character work. It's remarkable. They gave her nothing. And you still kind of fall in love with her. That's all Lizzie Kaplan. But the MVP of this movie is Michael Shannon. Now, I can't reveal anything about his character, but this actor, known for his steely-eyed intensity in dramas, provides one of the greater deadpan comedy performances in recent memory. His character is a hoot, and his exit line is, well, wait, is, it is a corker. I award the night before a large bag of popcorn. And like a large bag of popcorn, not every single one of the jokes pop. There's a few duds in there, but there's more than enough belly laughs to fill the bag. Or the sack, if you want a Squirtle reference joke. And by the way, if scrotal reference jokes are your thing, hey, have I got a movie for you. That does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking right down there. Go ahead. I'll wait. It's really important. Also, leave your comments below, and please be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and have yourself a merry little Christmas.